Southwest Cattle Empire, nothing stood in her way, not even the danger of a fatal disease or epidemic. But the warnings of a young doctor who was wholeheartedly devoted to the welfare of the community placed him squarely between her and her unlawful ambition. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. Plug in his arm. He's sick behind. Ah, uh, these guys are gonna have a doctor. Hundred miles from the middle of nowhere, and you say they gotta have a doctor? There's a ranch over there behind that ridge. I saw before the rustlers jumped us. We can figure out what to do from there. All right, man. Let's start rolling. Glad you can make it. What do you got here? Ain't nothing wrong with me. That little saw nice breeze won't fix. You better tend to them first. That's Marty. Got his leg busted when his horse was shot out in London. I guess he needs something worse than Sam here. <laughs> it's not my arm that hurts so much, Doc. I'm sick. I, I can hardly see good anymore. I can't stop shaking. Don't be such a crybaby, Sam. First time he gets shot, you're always more scared than hurt. This boy's got a fever, and he shouldn't have. The wound's not gangrenous. I don't like the looks of those boils, either. And pimples. A kid his age always gets them. Not those kind. You take it easy and keep warm. I'll be back with you in a minute. Feel your men in here, strong ones. Help hold him down while I set this leg. Tell Cafferty to get a small piece of harness that he can bite on. It'll help ease the pain. I just came from the herd. Is Redmond here? Inside, Miss Fancy. Thank you. Done to you. Now don't go fretting, honey. Don't hurt half as bad as a hangnail. Except for the rustler, Sam and Marty here got the worst of it. Oh, poor Marty. Now don't you go fretting any, honey. You'll get your share same as the others. Sam, poor baby. I wouldn't go too close to him, ma'am. He has a fever. And from the symptoms, it may be contagious. 
Who are you? He's the doc, honey. Bill Baxter from Rising Spring. Oh. Meet Fancy Varden, Doc. Curtis, the most popular citizen in the whole town of Elkton. Now, don't you believe him, Doctor. At least half the population of Elkton doesn't like me at all. <laughs> well, I can't understand that. <laughs> she means the female half, Doc. Fancy owns the Golden Slipper. Biggest cafe and card house in town. Oh? Oh, now, don't get the wrong impression, Doctor. I'm a businesswoman these days. Strictly business. And right now, I'm concerned with just two things. Getting the best possible care for my men and getting my herd back into Elkton. How soon can we travel? Well, Redmond's all right to travel horseback now. Marty will have to go in in the chuck wagon. And I want to keep the boy here a couple of days, at least until I break his fever. Well, do what you can, Doctor. If you get my boy back on his feet by the end of the week, I'll double your fee. I can't rush nature, ma'am. All I can do is sort of help it along. Well, I suppose so. Anyway, it's nice to have met you. Pleasure's mine. Uh, I'd like a word with you outside, honey. Be good, boys, and do what the doctor says. I'll see you in town. The broker said he'd wait one more night at the price we arranged, and no longer, so we'll have to hurry. I can't push that beef any faster, honey. We've lost 20 head already. What? I never saw so many drop in one drive. Well, what kind of stock did you buy? Prime beef. The only thing I can pick is they must have eaten some poison wheat or drank some tainted water. Well, then all the more reason we'll have to get him in fast. We can't afford to lose any more. I always do the best for you, Fancy. You know that. Do I? Don't look at me like that. I'm liable to get out of hand in front of all these boys. Why not? Ashamed of me? Ashamed of you? wrong with him. Well, don't spare the time and expense. Fancy would want it that way. Will that be all right? Plenty. Anytime you come to Elkton, look us up. Fancy's place alone could keep you in chips. Might do that sometime, Red. Good luck. Thank you, Doc. Sorry to be such a baby, Doc. I I'm sick. I think I'm going to die. Oh, don't talk like that, Sam. But what's wrong with me, Doc? What have I got? I don't know. Those boils like this one on your neck. When did you first notice that condition? It must have been three, four days ago. About the time we crossed the border. What have you been eating? Beans, jerky, biscuits, you know, trail a little. Any fresh meat? Redmond wouldn't let us. Losing too many. Losing too many? What do you mean? It's tears. Lose three, four a day that shake like it was 40 blow, all got fits. Next day, they're dead. It's coming, Doc. Here it comes again. Doc, tell me. Please, help me. Hoping it wouldn't be, but it is. It's anthrax. Anthrax? Holy smokes, Doc. Are you sure? Positive. Has all the post-mortem symptoms. Septicemia, hemorrhagic edema. What? That's what killed Sam. You mean us humans can catch it? Sam had a light form, cutaneous, just under the skin, until the bullet drove the bacteria into his bloodstream. But he died of pulmonary anthrax, just like that steer. Well, how catching is this stuff with humans, Doc? You can catch this only by direct contact. 
either by breathing the germ or getting them in an open wound like Sam did. I see. But uh, cattle get it real easy, is that it? They sure do. Crowded together the way they are, anthrax could go through a herd like wildfire. Well, uh, what are you going to do about it? Isn't there some way to stop us? There is. Get every ranch hand in the area together and backtrack Redmond's herd to the border. Bury every dead steer you can find and bury him deep. Tell your men to be careful. Have them work with a wet handkerchief over their mouths and noses. And tell them to wear gloves and burn the gloves when they're finished. You got it? I got it. I'll try to catch Redmond before he reaches town. If this gets out of control, it could wipe the southwest cattle business off of the map. crossing and headed for town. It was dusk before he reached Elkton and the Golden Slipper. We've got to destroy the herd. Kill off every steer. We do? Why? They're diseased. They have anthrax. Do you know what you're asking? Yes, I do. And I'm sorry. Truly sorry. No doubt. Sorrow runs cheap when you stand nothing to lose. Do you know what that herd cost me, Doctor? I have a pretty good idea. Well, let me tell you something. That herd cost me a great deal more than money. I had to put this dance hall in Hawk in order to raise enough money to buy it. And do you know why? So I could get out of this lousy business and into something decent. So Red and I can sink our profits in a ranch and start off clean as man and wife. For the first time in my life, I'm looking ahead to some happiness and decency. And you want me to destroy it. It can be helped, honey. No. I tell you, I won't do it. I can't. Neither you nor anybody else is going to destroy that herd. I'm sorry. It has to be done. Doc's right, honey. People can get this stuff, too, you know. I've been trying to tell you. Sam died this afternoon. Sam? Sammy's dead? Doc said he died of anthrax. Just like the cattle. Look, Red, why don't you go get us some drinks? What's your preference, Doctor? Nothing for me right now, thank you. you get the usual for me and one for yourself. Well, why don't you sit down, Doctor? Oh, you're swearing yourself out. Thank you. Sam had a gunshot wound. What makes you think he died of anthrax? He had all the symptoms. Well, wouldn't the symptoms have been the same if the wound had been gangrenous? Similar, but not the same. I don't believe it. Sorry as I am about Sam, I think you're using him to get at me. I'm simply trying to be reasonable with you, Miss Varden. But if it can't be done, we'll have to handle it some other way. Oh. There are any number of ways to attack a problem, Doctor. Thanks for your hospitality, Miss Varden, but it won't work. All right, Doctor. This is my last offer, a pure and simple business proposition. I'll give you 10% of my profit if you let me sell my cattle before you condemn them. Let the buyers take the loss. 
They're insured. They can stand it better than I can. It's not only dishonest, but you're asking me to bring the disease right into this town. Well, maybe my offer's not big enough. Twenty percent. My net profit. Just let me break even. It's out of the question. I'm afraid you don't know me very well, Doctor. Maybe not, but I'm beginning to understand. It's easy to see you don't give a hoot about anyone but yourself. I've heard of people who value money more than they do human lives, but I never thought I'd have the dishonor to meet one of them face to face. The law will handle this from now on. I don't even want to be within rock throwing distance of anybody like you. Go get him. I don't care what you do or how you do it, just stop him from reaching the marshal's office. Stop him yourself. Fred, Fred, you don't mean that. You can't. Why, you don't believe those things he said, do you? They're not true. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You can see that, can't you? Why, he's nothing but a stubborn, heartless quack, that's all he is. He's just trying to make a big public hero of himself. I found out something about you tonight. I saw right in places in you I never dreamed of. Find somebody else to sweep your gutter. Now, just a minute, cowboy. Let's get a couple of things straight. Who are you to go high and mighty with me? If I hadn't picked you off that pile of stable dirt, you'd still be nothing but a smelly, bow-legged, fifteen-dollar-a-month saddle tramp. And you know it. Maybe my dirt don't smell as perfume as your sweetheart. But at least I can wash it off for having an honest day's work. Oh! Oh! you know when it's over. Well, looks like things are moving my way after all, doesn't it? Marshall's out of town, you're busy for the rest of the night. Makes things pretty easy for me, doesn't it? You wouldn't, not after all this. Wouldn't I? Whether Red lives or dies, my life has to go on. As I told you before, Doctor, I have no intention of starting again in the gutter and dragging myself all the way back up. I'm getting a little too old for that kind of competition. My time's running out. Do you know what that means to a woman, Dr. Baxter? If you were a woman, a real woman, you couldn't possibly be thinking the way you are. We live in different worlds. Even the words don't mean the same thing to you and to me. So you go right ahead, Doctor. Call me any name you want to. I've heard them all before. And I'm used to them. I'm offering a hundred bucks for a night's work. How about it? Okay, I'll see you outside. Oh, Mike. When the doc is finished with Red, will you see that he stays? I don't want him to leave. Sure, Miss Fancy. I'm Marshal Dunham. I just got back to town and heard about it. Will he live? He has a chance. I'll know better in a few hours. Where's Fancy? He's out bringing in a herd of diseased cattle. What's that? I'll explain on the way. Doc, Fancy says you're to stay put. Well, in that case, we'll... <laughs> Another mile, they'd be in the railroad pen. 
Go tell the boys to keep the herd moving. Tell them to fight or we'll lose everything. I'll ride ahead and tell the buyer we're bringing them in. Some time in all that confusion to convince the rest of Redmond's cowboys we weren't rustlers. They were decent men, and when they got the point, the battle was over. That is, for everybody except Fancy Varden, who was streaking for town. Deputies and cowboys stayed out to destroy the herd, according to my order. The marshal brought Fancy Varden back to town under arrest, and I came with him to look after Red. Take it easy, Fancy. That stuff won't help any. I'm scared. I wasn't half this scared when I was 15 and ran away from home. Yeah. Tempted murder if he lives, murder if he dies. Not a pretty thought either way, is it? Well, he'll be all right. I wouldn't. Doesn't he want to see me? No, he doesn't. Well, attempted murder's not such a bad rap, Fancy. You're lucky. There won't be any charges, Marshal. Redmond told me nobody shot him. Said he stumbled and fell on his own gun. Look, Fancy. I'm sorry you lost your cattle. I, I know what that meant to you. But you're going to lose this place, too. We don't want you around this town. If you're still here tomorrow, I'll dig up some charges that'll put you away for a long, long time. Redmond's out of danger, Marshal, but he needs some nursing. You see that he gets it. Just one more thing, Doctor. Have you got anything in that black bag of yours that's good for a headache? We might try going to church. Best relief I know.
Doc. On behalf of everybody in town, I want to thank you for everything you've done. 